Hey, thanks for stopping by. Today, I'm going to make the case for why Radagon should be seen as the main antagonist. To start, I think it's clear that Radagon wants to preserve this current age. After you defeat Morgoth, you can see Radagon's crosshatch pattern sealing off the Erd Tree. This is the same pattern you see on his statues, Sword Seal, and Score Seal. And this was done in defiance of the two fingers. When you get back to the Round Table Hold, they are confused and stunned into silence. Shaken by this turn of events, they are busy consulting the Great Will. But if the Erd Tree hadn't been sealed off, then the Tarnished would become Elden Lord after defeating Morgoth. The Two Fingers and Enya say as much. You have earned the right to become Elden Lord. Now, seek the Erd Tree and an audience with Queen Malika to become Elden Lord and restore the Golden Order. In fact, without Radagon, I think Vike would have become Elden Lord long before we showed up. As the fingerprint set tells us, no other Tarnished was closer to the throne of Elden Lord than Vike. If it weren't for Radagon's thorns, there would have been no need to sacrifice a kindling maiden. And Vike's desire to save his maiden was why he got fingered by the Frenzied Flame. Another potential insight into Radagon could come from your fight against- Sir Gideon Othnir, the All-Knowing! None shall take the throne. Queen Marika has high hopes for us, that we continue to struggle unto eternity. His armor set also tells us that when Gideon glimpsed into the will of Queen Marika, he shuddered in fear at the end that should not be. The word will is translated from this kanji, which can also be translated as dying wish. A special thanks to Your Next Flame and The Deep Dark Abyss, who did alternate translations for the Japanese text. Oh, and uh, quick spoilers for Dark Souls 3. If you kill Yuria of Londor, that same kanji was also used to describe Kaf's dying wish. I couldn't find where I first saw this theory, but what if Gideon didn't see into the will of Merica, but Radagon? As we learn from the Gold Mask quest, Radagon is Merica, and what Gideon tells us doesn't mesh with Merica's actions. After all, the very next boss we fight is Merica's first husband, who is once again guided by grace to become Elden Lord, just like she promised many years ago. I will give back what I once claimed. Return to the lands between. Wage war. And brandish the Elden Ring. Warriors of my lord. Lord Godfrey. But on the other hand, Radagon would want the Tarnished to keep struggling. That way, there wouldn't be a new Elden Lord to succeed him. But sealing off the Erd Tree wasn't the only way Radagon tried to preserve his status. Sometime before he left Renala, Radagon gave her an amber egg. This is the great rune of unborn demigods that perfects those who have been born anew. But this was done well before Merica shattered the Elden Ring. And so, Radagon must have been able to extract it from the Elden Ring itself. There is precedent for this, as Enya tells us. The rune of death goes by two names. The other is destined death. The forbidden shadow plucked from the Golden Order upon its creation. If so, there would be a rather elegant symmetry with the Rune of Death taken away from Merica, while her other half takes away the Rune of the Unborn. Again, it's like poetry, so if they rhyme. What I find fascinating is that after the great Rune that governs the birth of demigods is taken away, the next two demigods who are born just so happened to be born with afflictions. According to the remembrance of the Rot Goddess, Mikola and Melania are both the children of a single god. As such, they are both Empyreans, but suffered afflictions from birth. One was cursed with eternal childhood, and the other harbored rot within. Now, the first phrase of the second sentence has gotten a lot of attention since it's about the origin of the Empyreans. While being born of a single god guarantees being an Empyrean, it's not the only way to become one. Merica, after all, is an Empyrean. But I want to focus on the rest of the sentence, but suffered afflictions from birth. 
Unlike their status as Empyreans, to me it sounds like the twins suffering from afflictions was unexpected and wasn't seen as an inevitable consequence of them being born of a single god. And in the original Japanese, it's also left ambiguous as to how exactly the twins became afflicted. I'm basing this on the ga particle, since it's a conjunction. If I'm missing something, please let me know. Like a lot of people, for the longest time I assumed Mikola and Melania's afflictions were a product of Radagon and Merica's self-love. But what if instead it's because the great rune that governs the birth of demigods was removed? Without the great rune that perfects the unborn, any demigods born from then on would essentially be damaged goods and unfit to succeed Merica as Empyrean. If it weren't for Mikola and his unalloyed gold, Melania would have been consumed by the Scarlet Rot much, much sooner. As for Mikola himself, something seems to be wrong with his blood, since the Halic tree grew up misshapen and unfinished. And while that may be explained by Moog's kidnapping, we also know that Mikola never produced an heir that would further the Mogwin dynasty, despite Moog's many, many attempts. I think Radagon taking away the Rune of the Unborn was an act of sabotage to prevent any future Empyrean successors. And without a new Empyrean, Merica would be stuck with Radagon. There is definitely a connection between the Great Rune of the Unborn and the Twins, which notes that children born anew by Vanala are all frail and short-lived, imperfect beings, each and all. In the original Japanese for Melania's Remembrance, Mikola and Melania are called fragile, and that same kanji is also used in the Great Rune of the Unborn, in addition, the kanji for perfect in the Great Rune also appears in the last line in the description for the Radagon icon, which says he aspired to be complete. That last line can also be translated as the hero aimed for perfection. There's also the fact that the Great Rune of the Unborn and Melania have very similar looking Great Runes, and the other siblings in the game, like Moog and Morgoth, as well as Rikard and Vadan, have great runes that resemble one another. It's also interesting that when you finally encounter Merica, she is pierced through the womb, and after you defeat Radagon and the Elden Beast, the lance is no longer there. The implication may be that Radagon was that lance, and the ultimate form of contraception. As for why Radagon gave the amber egg to Vanala, there is a simple answer. She is the love of his life, and is the one person he would trust the most. But of course, there could be other motivations. Maybe Radagon wanted to rebirth himself, or Vanala as a failsafe. I'll just leave it there. So that's my theory. I'd love to hear what Yens think. Do you think I'm onto something, or have I gone completely unhinged? In any case, thank you so much for watching.